McAfee. Uh, we have a lot going on, though. So what's going on around Business Loop? We have a, a fire, a, a massive fire somewhere around Club Vogue down in that area? <laughs> yeah, I don't have a lot of details, um, but we're hearing from our friends at ABC 17 that both lanes of the Business Loop is closed in the area of Columbia Pond and Club and, Vogue. So, And a lot of people use uh, use that, you know, route to get to yes. various, you know, side arteries. So uh, you may want to plan your trip accordingly. As we learn more, we will uh, we'll report that. If you see more out there on the roads and byways and highways, 573-874-9390, the number. It's Feel Good Friday. Um, and um, I'm disappointed that, Hannah, you haven't already noticed. That it's Red Friday. Wear your Red Friday, too. Have you said anything? Are you really going to say that I never, I didn't notice? On air. Oh, I mean, on I'm, air. That, I was going to say that was the first thing I said to you this right, morning. Look what it says. My daughter sent me this from North Carolina. I'm kind of disappointed that there's no puff paint today. Yeah, but it says yeah, Papa. That's true. Aww. But it says Papa. It's it's it's, it's very nice. See? We're like very matching. We're very Americana today. You are. And you, I love that. I love that hoodie. Where do you, can you buy that hoodie still, or is that like a no? It's a, a year old or something. Ball oh, yeah. vintage. Vintage. Okay. Randy would probably Throwback. love to know what year that was from. Yeah. Now, see, I wonder when you're my age, are you still going to have that in the cedar chest? You know, and you pull it out. Yeah, there's certain clothes in the cedar that, chest. <laughs> do you, you don't have a cedar chest. I don't. I have a camphor chest. We had it, years ago. We knew a we knew a a Chinese a, an importer of Chinese goods. This was in the 80s and 90s when like when China and us were getting along better, and he imported Chinese stuff, and that's all we could afford at that time was cheap Chinese imported furniture. But it's a really new, neat camphor chest. So when you open now, it up, it smells it's like camphor. And now they know everything oh, about it's, you. It's really cool. Now the cheap Chinese <laughs> furniture just comes from Amazon. But it, well, but it's it was right. cheap, but you know it's hand carved and stuff. Oh, it, yeah, so, yeah. so much different the, quality, yeah. probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't get. But it you going. have to put a mask on it if they call for a pandemic. <laughs> that's, so right. That's, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Hey, so there's lots going on. Um, uh, the uh, the invasion at the southern border continues and uh, overwhelms Texas National Guard's men and women. I mean, it was a it was a brutal scene down there. Some of them were reportedly injured. Um, bad bad news there. Lincoln University reinstates its president following an independent review. Did you see that? Big deal. That's a big I deal. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. So we'll have to unpack that because uh, the Missourian was uh, was reporting on that. Monster spending bill, I guess, is going to be voted on today, maybe. Are they finally going to do it? This morning by the House and probably tonight by the Senate. And uh, there's uh, there's at least one representative out of Georgia who is fed up, and he's listing all of the amendments that didn't make it, um, and it's pretty frightening. The things that the House passed that didn't make it into the final bill, uh, the, it keeps bubbling to the surface. What What is Mike Johnson doing? Is his head on the chopping block like McCarthy? Well, and other folks are really mad because, of course, they had that self-imposed rule that they would be allowed 72 hours to review the text of the bill, and if they vote this morning, they are going to just uh, throw that rule out the window. Are you saying that Mike Johnson is channeling uh, Nancy Pelosi if you, if you, you know, you have to pass the bill to know what's in the bill? Yeah. Oh, man. That's so disappointing. I like the way Johnson talks, but sometimes, I don't know, his actions are a little more wimpy. They, they tend to be more too conciliatory to the other side well, and he can I, be very reserved can he yes he can be but there's a but again that's that i think there may be just that silent measured there's a lot going on behind the surface but he doesn't want to get too uh too worked up and too ebullient over things so well, and uh, congressman mark alford had posted on his twitter uh, he highlighted he found one not even a full line it was like half of a line of the budget they had slid in like more funding for, uh, I was it Ukraine? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll find the tweet and I'll I'll verify that. But it wasn't even a full line of it. It was half of a line, and he found it. Wow! wow. By, because like, he had time to read it, right? Well, yeah, and he's like, you know, this is one line, and I have a thousand more pages to go. Yeah. It's yeah. it's bad. I mean, thousands of pages. And uh, Jesse Waters reporting that. There's 150000 for a gay senior home, $15 million to pay for Egyptians' college tuitions. Doesn't that frost your buns, as Gary Nolan likes to say, Hannah? They're paying, we're paying for Egyptian college tuitions. <laughs> but not poor Hannah. Not poor Hannah. Womp womp. 400000 for a gay activist group to teach elementary kids about being trans. Five hundred k for a DEI zoo. How do you have a DEI zoo? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 
Four four hundred k for a group to give clothes to teens to help them hide their gender. I mean, I. This is just Jesse Waters reporting. I, well, I've looked for it. Once this stuff was highlighted, I mean, they pulled out the, uh, the <laughs> I don't know the right way to say it, the uh, jungle. On the last bill. Yeah. The, the fetish and kink bill. Yes, yeah, the fetish you. and kink center up <laughs> yeah. in Pennsylvania. Yes. Wasn't it a dungeon? Yeah, they had dungeons and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's early. The kids aren't up yet. Okay. Yeah. Brian Houseworth is up, though, and he's been working wall to wall. Did you get any sleep? There's so much going on. You Brian? know, this has been, um, <clears throat> I'll talk about this in Winners and Losers of the Week. This has been, without question, the craziest, most busy week I can ever remember in terms of breaking news. And uh, it has been busy. And, you know, quite frankly, if if I could literally do a five-minute newscast and do nothing but crime, wow. I could. And I would still have, they would all be A, number one lead type stories. Um my, and, I, you know, we'll talk about it throughout the morning. Okay, the well, CPD, we'll CPD's got their hands full. Well, they have uh, their hands full. And we're, but we're going to have some fun stuff. It, I mean, I, I, on Fridays, don't you don't you feel generous and philanthropic? And we've, we've had such a good week. And, you know, every, everyone out there feeling you think good. We've ha- you think we've had a good week? Well, no, no, no. I mean, but pe- Nick, except for that. I'm just talking about people in general. And, you, you know, or maybe we've had a bad week, so you want to feel good. Well, uh, we're going to be talking with Rick McKernan, who's a proud downtown optimist in columbia because guess what next friday there's an interesting event going on do you know what geocaching is mm, no well, we're is gonna that learn how about you pronounce it geocache i think that's what it's called but we're going to find out from rick about that because the optimists are putting on a thing and of course the optimist goal of course uh is to is to basically advance youth uh you know bringing out the best in youth and our community and mm-hmm. in ourselves right the optimists are a great group so we're going to talk with rick at 7 10 at 8 10 you've heard of about four columbia that event where church groups get mm-hmm. together and uh, volunteers come out, it's going to be in April. Shelly Meyer from that group is going to join us at 810. So what we have to counteract. When the teeter is tottering towards crime and drugs and graft and corruption and everything else, we need to make the teeter totter in the other direction. We have to do philanthropy. We have to reach out. We have to be good. The very best of us has to happen. So we're going to talk about that today. I understand, and I, do, I don't disagree. And we try to do that in our news as well. We really try to, um, ha- and we've had a lot of positive things, but um, it's just, it is a challenge. The Optimist Club does a great job. They really do, and they've been heavily involved in this community for years. Yes. Now, uh, we, we do have to cover the news, though, and you talk about, I mean, sadly, you're talking about a priest mm. charged with two felony accounts of child pornography. Um, the charges are basically unspeakable. Um, in in in, there's something we. I'm going to say. I'm going to keep this as, as very is very less graphic as, graphic as I can. But some of the other media outlets have really missed something very important in this court document that I linked to on 93.9 The Eagle and also KWS.com, and that is by this former priest's own admission to the Boone. This was the Boone County Cyber Crimes Task Force, by the way, that made the arrest. He, had, he allegedly admits there are a number of other victims in this case. Um, now, he had been stationed here in Columbia at Sacred Heart at one time. He was in St. Martin's. John knows him. He was stationed at a number of parishes. Boonville um, Training School for Boys. He was on staff there, apparently. Yes. Mm-mm. And he says, uh, the, uh, he says in the court document he has been sexually attracted to children for um, basically his entire adult life. He's 77 years old. The charges are very graphic, but again, if there are people out there, other potential victims, they need to take a look at that and let the authorities know. Bottom line, on the current charges that he's facing, the child pornography and promoting and also uh, possession, he's jailed without bond. The judge in Cole County calls him a danger to the community, zero bond, but they also found an unpublished book that he wrote in there I'm going to spare the details on what's in that book, but it indicates there are other victims oh. and and also potentially a couple of young girls, 14 years old. Mm. I just encourage people to read the story yeah. because if there are other victims, they need to let the authorities know because in most of these cases, he says the people did not file police reports. So, wow. yes, it is very troubling and um, uh, it's up It's up at the top of the screen, 93.9theeagle.com and kws.com. There are even allegations about him going back to the mid-90s about yeah, uh, that's right. incidents with adult victims. And uh, he admits, in according to the court documents, that when he was in his late 30s and 40s, he was uh, also involved with um, 
uh, yes. Uh, so again, it's just the charges are very, very serious. And um, this this the, harkens the, back to the problems that the Catholic Church had, you know, going back a decade or two, you know, and oh, further than that. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, it all came to light then, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, but I thought that had been sort of taken care of, and maybe I mean, hopefully there are reforms in, in terms mm-hmm. of in terms of oversight and so forth and. Um, cause I haven't heard of uh, recently in any of any contemporary problems. This is now sort of old news that wasn't news, but now is right. Old events that are coming to light. Old event coming to light, uh, old events, but, but more, I think there's again, potentially m- a number of other victims. Yeah, I can't tell how many from the court document, but to your point, Randy, full disclosure, most of our listeners know, and the KWS audience definitely knows this. I was in the seminary. I was in a high school seminary. I never experienced anything like this, thank God. But it is unacceptable. It is unacceptable. And Bishop McKnight has made it very clear this is not acceptable. Again, these are allegations, but he's he's on record with the detectives is admitting to numerous things, and he went beyond what they were even asking about. So it is. It, you don't hear it as much anymore. There's a movie called Spotlight. Do you remember the movie Spotlight? No, I didn't see it. It was about, John, do you remember that? Yes. It was about Cardinal Law. They did a great job. It was about the Boston Globe investigating this very issue. Movie was great, but they missed one key key factor and one key fact in the case. They did not mention that Cardinal Law, before he went to Boston, was the bishop in Cape Girardeau in Springfield, Missouri, Uh and spent time here in Columbia and in Jefferson City. He did. Wow. He he was at the... Wasn't aware of that. Yes, he was. And that should have been in the movie. And and it saddens me at this time in our country when I think we're seeing the worst of, to use that...
secure this bond, the New York Attorney General's office has made a series of suggestions to the court about how Trump could go about securing the money. Trump's lawyers pushed back on all of the ideas. Well, that's uh, that's more of the mess going on up there in New York City. Stephanie Bell brings us the Daily DC Rundown. Trump has just three days to try to find the cash for this bond, but he has a new idea, and this might actually save him. Um, it, it could be a windfall to him. His uh, It could mean $3 billion to him. Apparently, they are in talks with Digital World Acquisition Corp about merging his Truth Social Media company mm. with this digital acquisition, which is actually publicly traded. And so it means that um, essentially the, the Truth Social could hit the stock market. And in that, in that case, Trump could benefit greatly and that hmm. would cover the bond amount. How fast that could go through, wow. not sure. I think there's a vote maybe happening today, maybe this week. Um, but, you know, he's wow. only got three days. And, you know, if you would have asked me how much Truth Social is worth, yeah. I would I, <laughs> not worth $3 billion in my mind. But, um, all right, anyway. So, Doesn't that require SEC and filings I, and everything? That sounds messy to get done so quickly. It Yeah, it yeah. does sound okay. messy. Yeah, but, so the question's going to be, how's he going to monetize that stake? Can he do it in three <sighs> days? Boy, that sounds like a reach. Wow. I don't think so. All right, we're also seeing... Um, there is a lot going on in D.C. They've got we've talked a little bit already about this spending bill. Um, the House is expected to vote this morning. A lot of people, including our own Congressman Mark Alford, are a little bit frustrated that they didn't get the full 72 hours to review the bill. Um, I think they're getting ready for their big. Uh, I think they go on spring break for like two weeks. Um, so they're trying to get this thing done. The Senate might vote today or it might extend into the weekend, but uh, they're on a short timeline. Uh, today is actually the deadline. Um, so a lot uh, going on there. Um, and of course, they're six months behind, right, already. And and DHS is one of the departments in this bill, isn't it? So, I mean, the border security thing, which is yep. melting down, is the very department that might not be funded if they don't get department it Department of Defense is uh, right. That's right, yeah. Well. There's sure. a reason to be in a hurry. Um, also, congressional news, we heard yesterday that Bob Menendez out in New Jersey mm. will not seek re-election as a Democrat. Not that he won't necessarily seek re-election. So... We are watching that. Um, we're also, uh, the State Department is trying to uh, get a bunch of U.S. citizens out of Haiti right now. Uh, that is a big problem. Their airport is shut down. Um, and then also, uh, we're expecting some news out of the U.N. today. There's a U.S.-backed resolution um, expected to be voted on that would call for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza uh, and um, tied to the release of additional hostages. Yeah, Israel's not going to go for that. There have been, I mean, there have been competing resolutions and they always get vetoed, so I doubt, um, yeah. but, but we will see this discussion happen today. And, you know, we didn't get to it yesterday, but speaking of the U.N., there is a uh, there is a some like a U.N. youth leader who is an absolute, I mean, anti-Semite, anti everything. And so we're going to talk about that as well later on when we get to uh, to some of those issues. I think this thing with Trump is is going to blow up in Letitia James face. I heard Jonathan Turley talking about businesses leaving New York and are get staging to do it because they can't. The environment is not what it used to be. Definitely not. I mean, it's just crazy. I'm
up in uh, Doris Drive. I don't know. We had a quiet spell for a while, and then all of a sudden, all heck broke out. I, I, maybe is it spring break related? People that should be in school aren't in school. I don't know what's going on. I, I wonder if it's connected. You know, like if somehow. I wonder. Yeah, it's the same people because it's crazy seeing was... the headlines while you're out of town uh, just like <laughs> yeah. every day. Well, and I know from at least one of the shootings, they still haven't released the name of the victim. Um, and I know Mike Murphy and Brian Houseworth in our newsroom were talking about how unusual that is, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. several days after the fact to still not have that name. So something's going on. And the other news, uh, very interesting, because we talked about this story a while back and it sort of went dormant. And then all of a sudden I see in the headline in the Columbia, Missouri, in the weekend edition, Lincoln reinstates its president, John Mosley. John, what do you have on that? Well, that is uh, the university over there. This is a story that goes back to January where a vice president of student affairs at Lincoln University in Jefferson City, Bonnie Candia Bailey, took her own life. But before that, she wrote a very critical memo outlining complaints against uh, John Mosley, the university president. He volunteered to go on paid leave during the investigation. Board of Curators brought in an outside law firm, and now he's been cleared in any kind of connection with that. And the curators did issue a statement where they said, they would work to improve their mental health response for employees and students and also look into better training for university leadership. This is a deal you might remember uh, prompted several rounds of student protests, alumni protests, they even took it to the Capitol one but day if you, for one of their protests. I mean, right. the things that were said on Twitter around that time were just awful and they were all about race and none of the tweets that were criticizing Mosley were even from anybody in Missouri or in anywhere about mid-Missouri, I think people were just, they saw his photo. He's a white man who is the president of an HBCU. And immediately yep. it became about race, not even about this director of student affairs. And it became kind of this blow up. And, you know, they brought in a third party. They did an investigation. But if you've if you've been in and around mid-Missouri, have known the history of Lincoln, have um, known uh, Dr. Mosley's story. Um, what an incredible journey for him, really. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. came in yeah, as the really. basketball coach. Mm -hmm. Came out of East Carolina and then became the athletic director at Lincoln and was kind of thrust into the president. So it appears job. as though there was a narrative not based on any evidence or any documentable problems that he was bullying on the basis of race right yeah, i mean that after, was the word they after used the fact, just bullying right? period yeah. Yeah. it morphed into that i think but i mean that's what know. i mean that was the narrative everyone all the race baiters were trying to put out there and this guy from every and i've sort of come late to his story uh, through this story but everything you hear about this guy's history is like exemplary Oh, yeah. And I mean, I mean, no one cares more about that university than him. I mean, it is his whole life. He I mean, he has done so many amazing things, whether you talk about these new law enforcement programs, the new nursing programs. Yeah. I mean, and I think one of the biggest things, having watched Lincoln over many years, the, one of the problems they have is turnover and tenure. Mm. And he's always been an issue. It, and and yep. he has dedicated. I mean, he's been there what more than 10 years now, I think, mm -hmm. since he first began. Um, so what a what an incredible thing that we still well, have you, him and that he hasn't yeah. moved on to someplace yeah. better. Yep. You come to it personally. Mr. Bell used to work over there, correct? He did, yeah, um, yeah. under a different university president, but yeah. Wow. And I think we have to point out something else. Uh, KJLU, which is the campus station there, and they're pretty much on the campus, but they, can, they, they flat out got a memo that I haven't seen reported anywhere else, and it said there was no evidence, the firm concluded, no evidence that Bailey was bullied or harassed by Mosley, and there were no violations of federal labor laws. But to Stephanie's point, their press conference at the Missouri Capitol, there was a big sign. John, you saw it. The big sign said, karma is something, and it never expires. Karma is something, and I can't remember, it never expires. And and it, this gets back to the, uh, when you're reporting on stuff like this, journalists, you have to, you know, there was a lot of stuff that was said that just, you know, just people, I, I didn't like the way it was handled. I, I did not like the way, now I'm talking not Publicly, by us. Publicly, yeah. Uh, so the, just, you, be, the point of the matter is that, yeah, he's going to get his job back, but he's his well, name's been, I mean, a He's, respected law firm, Lewis Rice in St. Right. Louis. They're a respected firm, right, yes. Stephanie? In they fact, are respected. Um, and the firm reviewed thousands of pages of emails, interviewed 24 Lincoln employees and leaders, 
and reported to the board on March 8th it found no evidence substantiating the accusation that Mosley had engaged in bullying, according to the Columbia Missourian. Now, if you're listening, student body president Kenlin Washington, I'd like you to call 573-874-9390 and, and tell me why you say the results of the investigation are, quote, very disheartening. Is that because it doesn't fit your narrative? And what evidence do you have? Do you have a text? Do you have an email? Do you have a digital recording of a conversation with the deceased Candia Bailey? And sadly, she was clearly a disturbed woman. We don't know why she was disturbed. We don't know what her medical history was. None of our business, really. But to make a statement like this when there's a time, you've got a white well-credentialed, highly respected president of a university. Who's been great for the university you in Mid-Missouri. His outreach yeah. that he's done, he's, he flies in the community. And I sense that's what's going on in this instance is the same thing that's going on in Columbia with regard to probably, uh, probably the majority of the students at Lincoln University just want to get their education and go on and, and make a life for themselves. But they can't say anything. They can't move on. The people, the people in the in the troubled areas in Columbia don't dare say anything because the bullying is not Mr. Mosley. The bullying is not the Columbia Police Department. The bullying is with the race baiters and the pot stirrers and the people that are making some kind of a living off of being those kind of people or getting some kind of of weird ego boost because they're stirring the pot. This is a great opportunity from what I can see from afar. I mean, I'm probably the furthest looking over this. This is a great opportunity for healing in the in a racially divided country to happen. And and sadly, because the student president just can't admit that there wasn't a problem like, is Kenlin a boy or a girl? He or she wanted and, and is now probably bullying and 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 silently tacitly intimidating other people that would like to speak up and say enough let's move on well That's what's sad. this is an opportunity yeah outside influence is playing into it i mean the alumni association so sad. I, think, I think the alumni group from out of atlanta was very involved in the protests over at the missouri state capitol on this and it just i don't know it just shows lincoln university yeah. in a bad light it's a big commuter campus with a lot of local yeah. folks who go there and they they've tried hard you know the mosley was instrumental in getting them up to finally 100 percent of their their state funding so they could draw down all the the department of federal department of ag dollars that they were entitled to and also it's been a good thing with this guy over there it's just sad to see the way this whole story is revolved and what, is he hamstrung now moving forward well that's and, what you don't that's what you're referencing and, brian and, and, and i i think that, well i mean he's confidence i'm sure has been hurt hurt from this sure. but to your point about you know in the papers still quoting this student body president there were dozens of employees and students who were interviewed by this by this firm by the the a very well respected firm and they concluded after interviewing all of them there was no evidence that there was bullying but, harassment but brian brian kenlin washington a young skull full of mush who's Excuse me, with all due respect, Kenlin, your your wiring is still being still being connected, okay? And for you to come out and without any substantiation say she lacks confidence in the interviews conducted with the employees as part of the independent review due to speculation that they may have feared losing their jobs. May, speculation, no confidence. You know what? Why don't you become a novelist? Go write a screenplay, okay? And yeah. let and let Mr. Mosley do the very good work he's been about. Yeah, well, again, we'll, we'll see what happens. And you po- you point out as well the uh, w- what's happening with the, with the people that live in these uh, p- poor neighborhoods that several of these shootings have happened in. Yeah, I'm going to give the number again. It's five seven three eight seven five T I P S. We have two homicides, and we've had at least five shots fired incidents this week in Columbia and Boone County. And uh, that we know of that the, the, I've, I believe there's probably a little bit more than that. I'm not sure all of them are reported because some of them weren't sure it was fireworks. But that's what we know of. Five, seven, three, eight, seven, five tips. They don't need your name. They don't need it. it Do you know anything about you? They need to know names of who did this. 
But you and I have talked about it. They fear, these people that live in those neighborhoods fear retaliation. Absolutely. They fear retaliation. I know that. We know and that's it for, understandable. And of it's course sad. it is. It's but a, well, isn't it unusual in this Walmart shooting, unless yeah. I missed it, yeah. we still don't know the name of the no. victim. And this was an adult, right? It's not a, not a minor as far as we know. It's isn't that unusual? It's very unusual. Hannah talked about this coming into this segment. Hannah's absolutely correct. And, and, and Mike Murphy and I talked about it. It's... The only other time I can remember is the Jeffrey Skaggs where he's accused of killing a woman on Christmas Day. They still, by the way, the Boone County Sheriff has not released her name. I don't know why the CPD hasn't done that. It's it's up to them. There could be something they don't want out. I don't know. But I was in court for his initial arraignment on, I'm trying to think what day that would have been. I guess it would have been Tuesday for his initial arraignment and uh, Hollis. And Judge Shaw specifically referred to the victim as DG. She did not use a name. Hmm. And and when I covered a rape trial, they a lot of times they use names. I can't use them, but I hear it. But in this case, they've only used DG. So we know it's a man. We know his initials are DG, but his name has not been released. And, uh, and they don't believe anybody else was connected. But no, no other names have been. No, his name has not been released. And we ha- we're not going to get it from a listener. If a listener calls in, we're not going to take it from a listener. It's got to be from right. a court document or from the police. And Stephanie, you were talking about watching this from afar. You know, you were out for a couple of days and how crazy it is. And you made the comment, Brian has referenced it, with these shootings, especially one in the north and one in the southwest the other day, you know, on the same day, is there a connection or is it just coincidence? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, my understanding from just talking to law enforcement in the past is sometimes, you know, especially being on the highway, sometimes we kind of get groups of people into the city and then there's disputes. And so I'm wondering... is. Is there any evidence that these things are in, in any way related? The police are being very tight-lipped right now. And the, so, Stephanie, your point, and yes, a lot of them come in from the outside. There's no question about it. Take a look at the Boone County Jail roster. A lot of them are from St. Louis, Memphis. I mean, you know, but there, and a lot of them are fr- right here in mid-Missouri as well, Columbia and some from Jefferson City. But police are not saying at this point if they are connected. And keep in mind, we still don't know who shot out the window at, at Popeye's this week. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't understand it. Well, there are, there are some fun things happening.
sorry to bother you. Would you mind asking me if I saw the game last night? Did you see the game last night? Oh, can you believe it? Guys, this works. It's amazing. Can you believe it? It means people's three favorite things in a conversation. It means I know what you're talking about, I agree with you, and most importantly, you talk. It works every single time. <laughs> a fun tip for your Friday. <laughs> I like Who was people that? ask me, uh, comedian Alex. Oh gosh, I don't know, but a comedian, uh, Alex Edelman. Edelman. Is that how you pronounce it? But people ask me about sports all the time, yeah. and I'm going to start using that. Can you believe it? And then I'm just going to be right in on the conversation. <laughs> what happens when their response is, "I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know." <laughs> Did right? you see that three pointer at the buzzer? You know, no. Can you believe it? <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> well, I think it's brilliant. I didn't think we'd ever be able to believe that a chip implanted in a human brain could lead said implantee to be able to control a computer I with have faith just thinking in it. Elon. Elon. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm a fangirl. Well, I. But Elon. it seemed very far fetched. Wow. And you're saying even as a doc, it was far fetched. I mean, it's just it's amazing. So. Well, I, let's just play this. This is this is really uh, remarkable. So this is um, Nolan Arbaugh, who years ago had a diving accident. He's 29 now, and years ago he had a diving accident. He's a quadriplegic, has been unable to play chess because he can't move the pieces, and it, you know it's tough. And even though they they make accommodations with little tubes that they can blow in and do things, certain tasks, uh, like maybe move the chair or whatever, have you know to help them be somewhat mobile. Um, here, here is the, one of the engineers at Neuralink looking over um, this implantee's shoulder, uh, and he's, well, here it is. So um, while he's been introducing himself, um, let me just flip the camera around so you can see what uh, Nolan's been doing. Yeah. Let me come over here. Do you want to explain a little bit what's going on here? Yeah. So um, I love playing chess, and so this is one of the things that y'all have enabled me to do, something that... I wasn't able to really do much the last few years, especially not like this. Um, I had to use like a mouse stick and stuff, but now it's all uh, it's all being done with my brain. If y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's that's all me, y'all. Um, it's pretty cool, huh? So he's he's thinking like Wild. like move you know King's Rook to you know row five. I mean, and it happens. You see the pieces moving on the laptop screen. I mean, this is just amazing. Now, even though I'm impressed by this, I imagine you're impressed by this hearing it, um, they say that there are some fits and starts and they've had some problems. It's not where they want it to be. Uh, and uh, a guy named uh, Mr. Ludwig, who is uh, from the National Institutes of Health uh, Neural Engineering Division, said that this is not a breakthrough. Still in the very early days of post-implantation, a lot of learning on both the Neuralink side and the subject side to maximize. Well, Talk of course. about poopy pants. Yeah, who's poopy pants now? <laughs> and 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 what's you know what's very interesting? I think I, sh we don't have the tinfoil hat here anymore, Hannah. But last month, Reuters remember reported that the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA inspectors, found problems with record keeping and quality controls for animal experiments at Mr. Musk's Neuralink lab. Less than a month after the startup said he was cleared to test this. In, in, in humans. I think there's an out to get Elon. <laughs> I just can't help think it. Whether it's the
There you go. <laughs> and then, so I got the shirt, and we watched Remy all in the same ten minutes. Of the movie. Happy, happy memories. Shannon posted a video of Remy on the Facebook page. She learned the pledge this week. <laughs> Helene texted last night and said that you guys enjoyed the video. Mm-mm. Oh my God. I got the best kick out of that. And our friends are making comments about it. Oh, yeah. Well, it was so so sort of out of character for her. You know? I know. I was <laughs> stunned. And she's like, well, I didn't mean to. I said, honey, that was Oh, no, gold. it's, yeah. It was radio gold. <clears throat> I thought it was funny, too. Like, <laughs> I, just, I, just ca- I just called her guest co-host yeah. <laughs> to make it, like, a little extra weird. I know. I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. They haven't said. Yeah. Um, at my doctor's appointment yesterday, I got lectured about sleep. Can you imagine? What do you mean? What did you say to her? She called it, my sleep hygiene is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, what can you do about it? You know? Yeah. She's like, if you're getting up at 3.30, you really should be going to bed at 8.30. Yeah, yeah. She's like, but let's try to shoot for at least 9.30. Yeah, okay, but you're not going to go to bed at 9.30. I know. Everything she was... Oh, she had a good sense of humor.
But no, I love the staff there. Like, this was an appointment with the RN, so I like I was kind of nervous, but she was probably just a couple years older than I am, and or yeah, sorry. Is he calling in? Your mic's not on. Broadcasting live from the Zimmer Communications World Headquarters. This is Wake Up Mid-Missouri. Get ready, pal. Here's your host, Randy Tobler. It is a feel-good Friday. We're wearing our red. Yes, red. I have my red on. My daughter sent me a t-shirt to make sure that the ladies in the group are well aware that I'm wearing my red. I hope you're all wearing red. You guys just manifest. Hannah manifests energy drinks and like <laughs> other things. She's like, you know what? I really would wish I had an energy drink. And they just show up to the station. You're like, I don't have any red shirts. No. And they just come in the mail. <laughs> Words have life, Stephanie. <laughs> Words have life. Well, my daughter listens to the show. And well, both daughters do. But the one out in North Carolina sent me a shirt. Make sure you open up the UPS package before midnight, Dad. Which, speaking... You know what I've never had? A winning lottery ticket. <laughs> Just saying. There you go. Speaking of uh, your daughter in North Carolina, yeah. uh, the most recent video that we posted of the uh, Toblers yes. on the Min- Wake Up in Missouri <laughs> Facebook page, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. But she commented on there and said, welcome to my life, basically. <laughs> like, do you see what I have to deal with? <laughs> we it did go viral, though. It did. Yeah. It did. Helene was like... Oh, did I do something wrong? I said, no, no that was just us. Perfect. That's good. All right. Well, Rick McKernan joins us now, uh, a downtown optimist. And uh, 
he's been putting together a project I've been hearing about, and now it's going to all come to fruition next Friday. Rick, welcome to Wake Up Mid-Missouri. Uh, good morning, Doctor. How are you doing today? I'm great, man. This is really a cool thing. You have a, a project coming up where young people in our area next Friday will be, is it geocaching? Is that it? Geo yeah, uh, geocaching is, is the framework uh, for this. Okay, and but it's about, it's celebrating the Bill of Rights. Tell us how this is going to work next Friday, March 29th. What's, what this is, uh, young kids today don't seem to know a whole lot about the government. And so uh, one, of the, one of the stated purposes for Optimist International is to inspire respect for the law and to promote an active interest in good government. We're going to do that through the use of the Bill of Rights. Uh, uh, as everybody should know, there are 10 amendments that make up the Bill of Rights, and we are uh, hiding each one of those amendments in one of 10 different city parks. Next Friday, we're going to distribute the coordinates for those, the latitude and longitude, and then during the month of April, the young folks will go out and find uh, as many of those as they can and then they're going to take a selfie video of themselves reading, actually reading that amendment. And then when they get all 10 of them, they're going to send us a composite video. And we're going to have a drawing and uh, prizes uh, for, for, uh, the, for the people that, uh, that are uh, selected in the drawing. Uh, it's a timely thing with, the, with this year being an election year. And we, we really hope that we can inspire some of these young people to, to learn more about their government. So how, do they, uh, how did they get qualified to, to participate in this event where they find the Ten Amendments and then they get, take a picture of themselves, a selfie, and then, you know, get, uh, get some prizes? On the Downtown Optimist Club website, uh, which is downtownoptimistclub.org, they will find uh, a form... Uh, that they can fill out. They don't have to register ahead of time. It helps us if they do, but uh, they can register. Uh, that way we'll have their phone number and, and their name. Uh, so when they start sending in these, these videos, uh, we'll know how to, uh, how to match them up uh, with, with the right kid. Um, the, the, they'll send them to the, the, op, the website is, uh, hunt for optimism uh, at uh, gmail.com okay and and there's the uh, the website again uh, for folks that are interested and by the way what's the age requirement for this is there a is there a window for age uh, the high high school age is is the the highest uh, but there really is no minimum age if uh, the, the younger folks that don't have transportation mom or dad's going to have to uh, shepherd them around but uh, there really is no minimum age, just an interest in getting outdoors, getting you out to visit some of the city parks, and an interest in learning about their government. Now, geocaching sounds like something very um, technically advanced, like you might need a Neuralink chip in your brain to figure it out. Uh, how hard is it? Can people learn? But if, if this is maybe a mom and dad and kid event, or a dad and kid, or a mom and child event, uh, you know, a little assistance, uh, how do you learn how to do this if you don't already know? Is there some, are there some guidelines? Is there a, you know, 101 course here online, or how do you do that? Well, the, basically, all, all you need is, is a cell phone. And in the cell phone, uh, most cell phones come already loaded with geo uh, maps, uh, uh, Google, uh, Google Maps, Google Earth. And in the search bar for that, you can type the latitude and longitude for the coordinates that we're going to distribute next next Friday. And uh, it will show you on a map where that is. Now, you're going to have to go to that location. And once you get to that location, you're still going to have to use some, some investigative skills to actually find the little cache that's hidden uh, that contains the uh, that particular amendment. So it's it's not terribly complicated. It does require just a little bit of looking around once you get to to the location. Uh, 
uh, the, the government's uh, equipment's uh, pretty sophisticated, but uh, what comes on a cell phone might get you within a uh, a thirty foot radius of that, and then you then you just have to look. I think this is so fun. It's I've cool. always kind of wanted to do like Survivor <laughs> or Amazing Race or something, and so here I can kind of feel like I'm playing a game without also embarrassing myself on national television. <laughs> so I like this avenue. And especially the the construct and the infrastructure around it and the reason behind it. I mean, it's the Bill of Rights, you know. I mean, getting down to these great patriotic first American principles. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Downtownoptimistclub.org, right? That's the, that's the place to go get all of the information, and it's not too late to register. That's, that's correct. Uh, and you, you, like I say, you don't have to register ahead of time. You can go out and find them. Uh, maybe go out and find one or two and then uh, decide if you want to go and uh, get, get all of them. Uh, it won't be available on that website until next Friday. Okay. Uh, we're also sending the coordinates to uh, each of the social studies teachers in the uh, Columbia School District. That's and super. Home, home school, uh, private school, it doesn't matter. Uh, our mission is helping kids. The tagline for the Optimist Club is bringing out the best in youth, in our community, and in ourselves. That makes us feel good on a Feel Good Friday. Tell us about the Optimist and how you guys are faring as an organization. And my my angle into that question is, you know, Rick, this has been a time, it's no secret, America has, for very good reasons in many cases, lost a lot of faith in some of its government institutions, you know, but you also see private institutions, uh, church uh, enrollment, uh, traditional institutions in this country uh, just uh, seem to see enrollment going down. And, you know, I think of the Optimists, the Rotary, the Lions, the, you know, uh, how, how, how are you doing? You, you having uh, young people join the Optimists? Is there interest in the club? Things doing okay? Uh, well, we, uh, we have, uh, all of the service clubs here in Columbia have experienced a little bit of a loss uh, of uh, membership. But uh, recently, in the last couple of years, we've started meeting together, all of the service club, the leaders, the presidents of, of all the service clubs, we've started meeting together. Uh, Downtown Optimist Club has kind of uh, been the, the host uh, for that. Uh, but there are, all, all those service clubs are all great. And it, it was back in the 1960s that uh, all the service clubs were meeting together, and that also happened to be a time when service clubs all were thriving. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to resurrect a little bit of that feeling, um, trying to get back to some of the basics uh, of, of uh, helping the community. Uh, we, we, we have a long ways to go, yep. but it's, it's not true totally that service clubs are, are fading away. Uh, th there are a couple of service clubs uh, that are, uh, nationally that have a actually grown. And, and Optimus has, has grown in other areas. The international part of Optimus uh, International has, has grown significantly. We, right now we have, I think, 40 Optimus clubs in Nepal of all places. Wow. Well, this is good news. I mean, and I think this is a station whose listeners, and I think I will speak for those gathered on the air with me, uh, we would rather see, you know, private organizations and, you know, 501c3s and charitable groups do the good work that government yeah, tries to do, but they never do it as good as local communities doing great for their local community. So the optimist bringing out the best in youth in our community and in ourselves, we would encourage everyone to get your young people involved in next Friday's March 29th geocaching for the bill of rights contest uh, there'll be a drawing to give out 10 50 gift cards and rick you hope to have copies of the constitution to give to the participants is that going to happen uh, well, yes we will we, uh, for everyone that, that uh, participates uh, we we have a copy of uh, the constitution and bill of rights uh, for for each and oh, every one wow. That is super. Boy, that is so great. I just think this is this is a great way to ignite interest, not only obviously in the very important Bill of Rights and our founding documents and what they mean, but also the Optimist Club. And the website, again, is downtownoptimistclub.org. All right. Rick McKernan, thanks for being with us. 
and there's a lot of heavy lifting. I've heard about this project for months, and I know you and yours there at The Optimist have done a ton of work. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for that. Appreciate it. Thank you all. All right. Take care. All right, there he is, Rick McKernan. We got some breaking news. Uh, it well continued breaking news out of the uh, from this morning. Columbia Boone County Joint Communication.
contrary to popular belief, uh, Club Vogue is not something that uh, I am going to have a lot of knowledge on. Uh, but I think Brian Hansen might. So, oh, okay. You never know with Brian. <laughs> yeah, you never He's a know. good optimist in the true sense of the word. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely and right. Little, little low optimist. <laughs> and if you're just tuning in, there's a bad fire by Club Vogue. <laughs> yeah. And oh, yeah. the business loop uh, between that's why we're Range about Line it. and Coates remains closed, so avoid the area. <laughs> and speaking of Brian Hansen, he's going to be hanging out with you guys yeah. next week. Next week, Brian's going to be hanging out with I'm, us. I'm going to be ditching you all for the weekend. I'm leaving you in his very capable hands i'm so. excited for you because you're kind of like doing a family thing and i yeah. think i can't wait for the stories when you yeah and back. this is the first family vacation with my niece who turns one today and with she, your husband right uh i As mean since we've, yeah, since we've been married yes um but does, does that mean you it won't you've got a niece along so it won't be a sleep vacation for you <laughs> <laughs> well there's two whole floors between us oh. and the baby so oh, okay. i think we'll be good okay you get a little respite now and then yeah but I have a Feel Good Friday story for us, actually out of Columbia. You've probably seen this floating around the local so or the local news outlets this week. Um, but there was a Columbia police officer who was a good Samaritan. There was a person in a in an electric wheelchair that got stuck in the middle of the road this week in Columbia near downtown. Mm. Like their wheelchair just kind of gave out <laughs> oh. which we chuckle a little bit but that yeah, sounds ter- that yeah. sounds terrifying yeah. right. not funny if it's you right? right and something was jammed up or it died something and this columbia police officer took the time to help this person get pushed to where they needed to go and uh from the photos that have been posted it looks like it was a uh, a pretty intensive uh feat you know, having to push pretty hard. Yeah. Because those electric wheelchairs are heavy. Well, and there's probably, you know, it's like typical, the motor has gears connected and you're trying to overcome a transmission and everything right. else. Yeah. So yeah. I have not seen the police officer's name uh, released anywhere, but I thought that was a pretty cool, a pretty cool Feel Good Friday story. Yeah. It reminds me of uh, at Providence and um, oh, where's Veterans United where it crosses there, you know, at any rate, that cross street, is that Bethel or no? I don't know. Uh, Southampton, I think. Uh, I saw a Boone County sheriff or deputy sheriff, this was, I don't know, six months ago, pushing a car out of the middle of the intersection. So some, wow. some woman's car had stalled. The guy gets out of his car and right out there in the middle. And I mean, there are people whizzing by on the other side, you know, and he's pushing this car out of the way. And those are the stories that the haters never want you to talk about. How about the state trooper in the, in the big round bale that he picked up out of the road? I didn't hear that one. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was just from a couple weeks ago. We covered that on the oh, show. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Cool yeah. video on, of him putting his back into it. And I think the moral that's of that right. story is yeah. don't arm wrestle with mid-Missouri law enforcement. It'd probably be the best bet. Yeah, I don't think I was I was listening that day. It was one day I was off on the, on the road. Um, but it, you hear these things that people do uh, in law enforcement. And, you know, to protect, yes, that's part of their mission. But they also serve in these kind of ways all the time. And you just don't hear those stories. Yeah, and since I had so much time for What's Hot with Hannah, I'm going to give you a little twofer oh, this right. morning. Double uh, dipping, are you? Yeah, mm-hmm. and we might touch on this again <laughs> later just because I think it's really cool. It's one of the things that uh, I might nerd out about a little bit. Um, but the Associated Press yesterday released a story that surgeons in the United States have successfully transplanted a pig kidney into a human. So the surgery just happened. I mean, we don't know the long-term success, but the surgery itself was successful. Um, The kidney is helping produce urine and all that fun stuff. So things are looking optimistically good. Wow. And that is really cool. I know uh, scientists have been working on that one for quite a while uh, just to help cut down on the transplant list because yeah. it's too know, long there's yeah. not enough there's too much demand not enough capacity yeah yeah they folks, said the patient was recovering the only problem they were having is he kept trying to root under the fence and get away <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay. but it was a, it was a four-hour surgery with 15 surgeons in the or so wow pretty big deal pretty exciting yeah, i don't know how they're gonna get that
that one of the losers of the week just may be some of the generals that were responsible for that. We're going to talk about that later. Winners and losers, you are welcome to weigh in on your nominations on the Facebook page. Can I go ahead and nominate myself for loser of the week? Oh, no, no. Why would you do that? No. Don't for know. what happened a couple breaks ago. That, that was just sharing your story with... <laughs> The Wake Up Mid-Missouri audience. Unintentionally. Yeah. yeah, and I'm getting roasted by listener John on well, the Facebook page. Oh, no, that's, you know, as, as we you get coached by management, letting them see behind the scenes yeah. is what the Wake Up family really enjoys. Yeah, um, I'm just, I don't think I said anything bad or embarrassing. <laughs> Hannah <laughs> accidentally left her, for those of you who are feeling left out, <laughs> Hannah left her mic on during the break. So it didn't go out over the air, but it's all over the uh, YouTube and Facebook Live video feed. You can hear my sound. Oh. Uh, Yeah, so. But I thought things were muted during the breaks. She was talking about that rash that she said. Oh, no. But she was talking about visiting a doctor. I was. (laughs) But I thought thought the sound was, audio was muted during that on Facebook. I'll I'll explain how it works Okay, never mind. It's a technical thing. Okay. So you're. We don't need to get in the weeds. You were sharing with me about how you were told by your medical professional to get more (laughs) sleep. That's a good thing, Hannah. We want you to get more sleep. You're always telling me I need to get more sleep. Yes. And so I was kind of trying to troll you and you didn't take the bait. I was like, can you believe I got lectured about sleep yesterday? And I said, yes, I can believe that. (laughs) I'm not the only one. The term that was used that I'd never heard before and it made me laugh was sleep hygiene. I was, I was told that my sleep hygiene is terrible, and it made me feel, like, stinky or something. Oh, like, yeah. you feel like drooling on the pillow or yeah. something? Yeah, take a, take a bath before you go to bed, Hannah. I mean, yeah, what's the like? What's the opposite of good sleep hygiene? Like, dirty sleep? Like, that's what? Clean, clean sleep and dirty sleep? That's well, I, I was also told I needed... Non-hygienic. Yeah. Sleep. Hygiene requires attention to self. It's a self-care term in the generic sense. So, in the in, in the context of sleep, it just means taking good care of yourself, making yeah. sure you get to bed at the same time, get up, especially at the same time. Uh, don't sleep in on Saturdays too late. Don't sleep in on Sundays. You know, that's all. And making sure you don't, you're not addicted to your blue screen before you go to bed and preferably not in the hour or two before you go to bed. Yeah. Okay. But that's like everything that I enjoy in the evenings and on the weekends. You just eliminated all joy from my life. Do you wear a little lavender sachet over, or put it under your pillow or a little lavender over your, wear some lavender, uh, you know, eye eye goggles? Not goggles. No. You know what I mean? Lavender stinks to me. I don't like it. Like, oh, like cauliflower in the same way? (laughs) No. uh, (laughs) Like lavender essential oil I have used before when I've been like like anxious. It's good. Nope. And so I think in a way I've trained myself to like feel anxious when I smell lavender. Like a reverse Pavlov yeah. thing? Instead of a cure, it's a stimulant for, I, you, yeah. for your anxiety. That's it's not weird. Because we advise patients to, if they're having you know sleep problems, to draw a nice warm bath, put a few drops of essential oil, of uh, lavender, immerse yourself in it. The lavender gets all over your body. Yeah. And then you're beautifully sleep hygienic before you go to bed. There you yeah. go. I, I was also told I needed to set some uh, sleep boundaries. Yeah. So. And the the RN that I saw was lovely. Loved her. She had a great sense of humor, but I was just sitting there like, I have never heard these terms before. It no? was cracking me up. Okay. Well, all right. So we had a good conversation and the audience, you know, got a little value added on the program here. That's yeah. good. Now, yeah. there you go. I'm excited. John, I'm really excited because you know how sometimes I get frustrated <laughs> that... The, <laughs> The justice system takes too long and there's an extension and the 30 days and the motions filed and then there's another 30 days and then the judge says, oh, the attorneys have other appointments and then another 30 and the plaintiffs and the defendants are held in. And I talk about how there's sludge in the system and how why can't we argue our own case? Well, Hannah explains to me now we might be able to tell us about it, Hannah. Well, and it's one of those just because you can doesn't mean you necessarily should. <laughs> Stephanie's cringing over here. Types of things. And I've been sitting on this story for two days waiting for Stephanie to get back. Okay. Uh, Stephanie, did you see what came out of Washington State? I didn't. They are no longer requiring that the bar exam be a prereq to becoming an attorney in the state of Washington. Missouri has proposed that in the past. Actually. Really? Really? Yeah. The state, yeah. Washington state is saying that the bar exam disproportionately blocks, quote, marginalized groups from becoming lawyers and is minimally effective for ensuring competency. 
Hmm. I think that's right. Like some of the best lawyers I know um, didn't have the best grades in law school and I'm sure probably struggled with the bar exam more than others. Now in hmm. Missouri, the, the first time passers rates like 92 percent. So most people pass the bar. But in other states like um, California, I don't know, Washington. I mean, it can be a serious barrier to entry. And I'd, I've never been a really good test taker. Um, I have to work really hard at it. Um, and I don't think so. I, I'm I'm not a big standardized test person. Um, and I think the practice of law is more about learning. And I wish they would do more like apprenticing type things in uh. law and in other places. Um, the law schools are getting a bit better about teaching students how to actually be a lawyer. Um, I don't know. So you mean there's a lot of um, theoretical and chalkboard training, but the practical training. Is there an analog analogy, like in medical school, we learn about the anatomy and about how things work and then how they break and then how to fix them with drugs and surgery. Okay. But it's, you know, at the same time you're learning that you're also beginning to spend time following on the coattails of doctors through. Yeah. Do you do that in the law? Th- I mean, realm? you can get an they inter- have clerk. Yeah, Clerk's kind of like a resident, right, Steph? Yeah, you can get an internship or a job, but it's not required. It's not requisite. Okay. Yeah, no. Okay. And hmm. so I think that that can be a struggle. At the same time, I mean, there's there's uh, like think about entering a big trial, right? I mean, like being able to withstand high pressure situations where it's all on the line mm-hmm. and having the fortitude and, and the planning and the and the process up and up until that point, I think, is something that, you know, you need as a lawyer. Um, and so, you know, the bar exam is about that. I mean, it's months of studying a whole for and it all comes down to one day. Yeah. And in many circumstances, you know, trials and other things, a lot's on the line and you have right. to have. Um, you know, the preparation and the the mental and physical toughness to get through that. You know, I, I, I sympathize with you on the test taking problems because I tend to overthink things. And is that your problem with, I do okay on, on standardized tests, um, but I, I really struggle because I'll, oh man, I, you know, you overthink, overthink. I know it's, it's either two and three out of the five choices. It, but each sounds so good. And, you know, is that your problem or why do you struggle with standardized tests? Yeah, I think that's probably right. And I think like I can always outwork people. And so like I always had really good grades because I just worked harder than other people. Uh-huh. And I don't like the test was my test scores were always a little bit lower than I thought they should be. Okay. And I think there are other people. My husband's a good example. He didn't work very hard. He didn't study very hard. He's a really good test taker. Really? And so there I think there are people out there who can outperform on tests. Huh. Um, and, and it's not necessarily an indicator of preparation or future success. But in his case, he's a good test taker and future success is real. Let's be clear about that. Right? Sure. Okay. Yeah. We got to make sure. But I mean, he probably could have walked in and gotten a pretty decent score on the LSAT. Um, uh, Brainiac, huh? But uh, yeah. he's just a good test taker. And yeah. I think people, some, t- yeah. some people have that skill and being a good test taker ultimately is not a skill that is valuable in life, right? Unless maybe yeah. you're going on Jeopardy. I don't know. But like, you know, <laughs> in your day to day life, like. You know, be, that skill is not something that will yeah. indicate success. Typically. Well, it does establish a certain minimum of knowledge, though, right? Perhaps. I mean, maybe. Are you in favor of abandoning SAT and ACT for college entrance? No. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we've essentially abandoned it. Yeah. But I, I mean, mean, you can already take it as many times as you want to. So and the it's entry, one of those things, if you're not happy with your score the first time, you can retake it. And the entry score, like, what's Mizzou's average score now? Like a 20 I'll tell you, they do like a weird program and, and people in mid-Missouri will be familiar with that. And you can take it like when you're in eighth grade or something, I think. Mm. Um, I took it. I think I got like a 17 or an 18 in before I ever went to high school. Wow. And so if we're sending college graduates in with a 20, I mean, I think if you write your name down and you <laughs> guess, I think you can get an 18. Wow. I don't I don't know if this is still the case, but I know when I was in high school, um, the state of Missouri actually started requiring that it all juniors i think it was take the act um and it you know they take it free of charge Mm -hmm. um so i don't know if that's still a thing that's happening but that was nice because it does cost a little bit of money to take the test yeah but Mm -hmm. i'm just saying the average score is like not nothing to write home about and i mean if the if if you're average or your required score is so low i mean you still require the test but really i mean (laughs) well when you're a college trying to make food courts that are more luxurious than Mar-a-Lago and you're having to provide a social vacation for students and pay all the professors who teach a class and, you know, whatever, I don't know, except for Tony Lupo, I don't know, they don't work very hard. 
different sometimes. <laughs> I mean, you know, and you want to let people come in and make sure they're all getting paid well. It's a business. Then you, then, yeah, yeah you're going to lower the bar. Them. You're going to lower the bar. I'm sorry. I'm just being cynical here. But I think there has been a change in standards for entrance. There's no doubt about that. Certainly. Yeah. But they also hand out a lot of nice scholarships, too. So Shout out to our only highly selective public institution, Truman State University, who go. regularly averages like a 27. On yeah, I mean, it's a highly collective, <laughs> a highly selective. And I, one, of, one of us went there. I can't imagine who that would be. I toured that place, and we had not even left the main like office where you meet before your tour starts. And they said they require two years of calculus and two years of foreign language. Yeah. And I immediately was like, all right, mom, we can go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested. It's a nerdy place. It's a nerdy place. It is. But K it, Vegas, as they call it's it. A, it's also a real value place to yes. study. But when yeah. you think about your universities, maybe that has something to say for our high schools and our K-12 education. Because different strokes for different folks. I would not have thrived at Mizzou. I will just, it wouldn't have been a good place for me. Truman was a much better fit for me. Why, would you have there been a party are, girl there? Or? No, I would have oh. gotten lost oh, in the shuffle. Oh, it would have been, it just, the, the, it would have. Too big, too not, unwieldy. Yeah. I think and, our junior senator from Missouri is a Truman State grad, isn't he? He certainly is. Eric Schmidt went to Truman State. Yeah. So did our chief ju justice of our Missouri Supreme Court, Judge Mary Rose Russell, is a Truman State grad. Wow. So we've got lots of uh, really great uh, graduates. But I'm just saying, there are people who, you know, and there are programs that Mizzou offers that Truman doesn't offer. And what I'm saying is we see it in the university system. We are lucky that we have places like S&T that right. do things that no one else does and that we can all as individuals choose. And I think we're all benefited by the fact Truman would not be a good place for everybody. Um, I wouldn't have done well at Mizzou in undergrad. Um, but I think, you know, so thinking that for K-12, we can just send people to these schools and give them no choice, again, I think is a bad system. And I think... Our universities show that choice is good for us. Is Cody Schrader a nerd? Uh, yeah, he must be. He, yeah, I think so. Well, and you know, in some sense, we claim him.
about in Romania. Maybe you should try the Cryer Pane, a heaping portion of brains. <laughs> Involves <laughs> boiled pig or calf brains coated with flour, eggs, and breadcrumbs, and then deep fried. Some folks could use a healthy helping. There you go. <laughs> T- take some for later. And finally, Kasu Marzu. Well, the European food regulators have made it officially illegal doesn't mean you can't find it if you go looking on the island of sardinia it is an uber fermented pecorino cheese very soft some think delicious but no denying the fact the special ingredient in casu marzu is living maggots Mm. now you know the rest Mm. of that breakfast hour story wow mommy i don't want these frosted flakes anymore <laughs> we're supposed to be feeling good today john That's it. <laughs> well you know That's it. isn't it a delicacy in the uh, asian countries to to take that monkey and put him on a stool under the table with a hole in it and the brain is <laughs> slurped out I think yeah, that's, I that's one thing. I don't know do. if that's I an urban so. legend or not. Oh, well. It How about good. eating the live octopus tentacles cut up where they stick to your tongue while you're trying to swallow? Stephanie likes an octopus. I do, too. I love it. But you like it cooked, right? Mm, yeah, I think I've had it raw before. Have you? Maybe? I didn't Was know. Is it still moving? Sushi no. octopus? Oh. I'm trying to think. I don't know. All good. I know is if octopus isn't cooked well, it sucks. Give um, me chicken. But anyway. <laughs> Give me chicken nuggets. <laughs> Come on, Hannah. Have a little fun. Mm. If you think this carp is good in a barrel, you ought to try it in the bathtub. <laughs> Did you see that? Did we talk about that world record paddlefish that was caught the other day? Oh, it was a monster, wasn't monster, it? Monster, yeah. Only downside is it was a dude from Kansas. Yeah. And right. he'd never been paddlefish fishing before. I know, isn't that something? Really? Good yeah. friends of ours were uh, fishing, actually, I guess the day before or over the last weekend, and um, she, she caught her first paddlefish, and it was really neat. But then we were asking about, how does paddlefish taste? Apparently, it tastes really good. I know. Ugh. I used to go snagging when I was growing up. Uh-huh. And what was his name, your first date? No, I'm huh? just kidding. Snagging. Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. Just kidding. Well, the <laughs> the first uh, the first spoonbill that I caught. Yeah. Uh, we'd been on the water for like five minutes, and my grandpa got my line set up, and then his weight hadn't even hit the bottom of the wow. of the lake yet, and I caught a seventy pounder. So. Oh, wow. you're kidding me! Yeah. Seventy. That's huge. Yeah, well, yeah. Did you eat it? Oh yeah. How how did you prepare it? Fried, of course. Yeah. Did you make steak out of it? I didn't realize uh-uh. they have cartilage. They don't have bones. Yeah, no right? bones. Yeah. Like in their bill. So uh-huh. they have a long bill. They kind of, I call them, they almost look like a swordfish. Yeah. The Missouri version, right? They look prehistoric. Yeah. yeah. And they stick that bill in the mud at the bottom of the lake or uh-huh. the river. Uh-huh. Um, and they eat like plankton and things like that. So oh. when you're snagging, you're dragging your weight along the bottom of the okay. water. Yeah. And you're literally trying to snag them off the bottom no bait no Just bait snagging with no, a, with yeah, a bear hook at it. yeah yep. got the treble hooks every couple feet on your line i don't know the the i don't know i'm just wondering they're eating off the bottom we know that bottom feeders accumulate toxins more oh don't ruin spoon bill that too. explains it john
I was in D.C. working. The restaurant you showed me you ate at wasn't working. It was working. Good restaurant. I was... A working meal. I was working. Nice stuff. Yeah. yeah. I had some good food and met with a lot yeah, of clients. Yeah, They have great restaurants there, yeah. Neat. Yeah, and the cherry blossoms are in right now, so that was really oh, wow. cool. Yeah, that it is. They smell like Bradford pears. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I walked by the Bradford pear grove in our neighborhood, and it smelled just fine yesterday. I don't mm. understand what... You and Hannah say the Bradford pears smell stinky. I, I just haven't experienced that. Hannah has a TikTok she could play for you if it didn't have a lot of so. bad words in it. Well, I wonder if removing Bradford <laughs> pears is going to be start of uh, part of uh, For Columbia's mission here in a couple of weeks. Its uh, director, Shelley Mayer, joins us now and to talk a little bit about an opportunity that you can have to help others feel good and feel good in the doing thereof in just a couple of weeks. Here's For Columbia's Shelly Mayer. How you doing, Shelly? I am well, Randy. How are you? I'm good. So tell us about, about, I don't know if everyone knows what For Columbia is. It's got a great sound because who doesn't want to be anything but For Columbia? But what does that mean? Right. Yeah, we're totally for our city, right? Um, so For Columbia is actually an annual serving event where Christian churches here in town partner and our goal is to simply get out and love and serve our city. Okay, and and that means in what kind of ways? Does that mean removing Bradford pears? Does it mean uh, you know, sweeping the sidewalk, uh, raking up leaves left over from last? Uh, you know what what does it mean? What what kind of yeah, opportunities? Well, it means all kinds of things. I'll, I'll be honest, we're not going to take down any Bradford pears this oh. year. But one of the biggest projects we have this year. Uh, includes trying to eradicate um, honeysuckle in the first ward. I don't know. I don't know how you feel about honeysuckle, but it's a pretty invasive. Oh, it is. Plant. Yeah, travels I... everywhere and and uh, really messes up people's yards. So huh. we're hoping to put a whole huge team out in the first ward um, to kind of tackle that. Wow, I'll have to bring along several um, Medrol dose packs for people that get into some kind of poison <laughs> ivy mixed up with the honeysuckle. Uh, I don't know. There you go. Yeah. We'll put you on our medical team. So no, so practically speaking, what can folks do that are listening and would like to do something for Columbia, for their neighbors? Uh, is this uh, private spaces, public spaces? What, I mean, parks, What? Where are where are the locations and the opportunities to help? Yeah, we are everywhere. Um, the fun thing about Fort Columbia, in my mind, is that we want to serve everywhere in our city. So uh, generally speaking, that's three main areas. We serve in public venues, um, places where anybody in our city can enjoy. So think uh, we're partnering with the district to serve downtown. We'll be working at five of our city parks, maybe six. Um, we're working at uh, two Head Start locations, mm. three of the of the public schools, and a private Montessori school that's run as a nonprofit. And then we're working. So far, we've got 24 homes identified where we'll be working actually with neighbors in our city who own their homes, but they just struggle to maintain them for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of things to do landscaping construction um planting flowers taking out honeysuckle but also um we'll be at three of our um, elder care facilities here in the city so for somebody who wants to serve or get out and bring a smile to a neighbor's face but maybe they don't uh, maybe they're older or they don't have a lot of energy they can go serve at one of those elder care facilities. Wow. And um, so we've got this thing we call relational serving, and it's really the idea is just get out and, and meet others and be an encouragement to them. Well, our pastor at Alive in Christ, at uh, Pastor Tim Morris, one of the pastors there, the senior pastor, um, was telling me about how our church has been there for what? It, but is this the tenth year, eleventh year of the organization? This is, this is our tenth year yeah. Of serving. Yeah, and and alive in Christ has served every single year. Yeah, and now we have what forty five churches partnering to serve a hundred and two sites. Wow, that means you're looking for a yeah. lot of volunteers, more volunteers than Joe Biden has gaffes. Eighteen hundred <laughs> volunteers. That's a yeah. lot of volunteers. Well, 
We actually have 57 <laughs> churches. Oh, my. Okay, well, I, I guess my commu- – oh, this was my communication from last year I'm looking at. I, I missed the date yeah. on that. 57 this yeah. year. Holy cow. 57. And so we've got enough work to keep at least 2,200 people busy. So I can tell you that as of this morning, uh, we've got a little over 750 people signed up. Wow. And so that's that's an amazing number of people, but we need a lot more. What's the date? April 27th, that's the last Saturday in April, and we're asking folks to serve from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., and then we'll feed you in there. We'll give you a free T-shirt to wear that day as you serve, and I guarantee you, you will have a great time. Do you have any red T-shirts? I'm running out of red stuff for Fridays, and the the ladies here, you know, they don't like that when I don't wear my red you got any red t-shirts? i'm so sorry i've, I've got to say our shirts this year are going to be a uh, yellow uh, for the volunteers uh, well okay that's okay well i'm uh, i'm going to be out there as soon as i can get off my uh, my saturday morning show so i'll go get out there and help i know helene's going to help how do we register do you go to for columbia.com that's f-o-r just like you started us out by saying we're all for our city for columbia.com and the registration is on the home page. We'll register here now button. Oh, there it is. I'm looking at it. It's real easy. It's right there. Yeah. Hannah, I can figure this one out. I got it. I can figure out how to register. I can do this. Well, if you're not more. signed up, do it now. Okay. And then, uh, and, and you don't have to have a, I see you've got a video here of people. I mean, it looks like there's some constructionally competent people here who are like, you know, they're carrying two That's by tens and doing it right there. Yeah. Mulching. Mulching. Mulch. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, well, there's awesome. mulch to do on this day. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so you don't have to have an extraordinary skill set, right? Anyone, regardless of their skill set, will have something to do. Anyone, regardless of skill, age, ability. Mm-hmm. We've got, we've got tons of things to do. Tons of, if you like to cook, we have a team of people who are going to be making freezer meals to deliver. Oh, um, I, I know so where Helene's going to be. I know where Helene's going to be. Well, and then, you know what I'm thinking? I, because there are skills, people always want to do things around their, their homes and our businesses. And I'll bet right. you can, if you're working alongside someone in some you know capacity, you there's probably going to be some semi-experts there, right? And you can probably learn some tips, some hacks, some life Absolutely. skill hacks here. We've got a ton of guys who know their way around the toolbox. But wow. also, uh, a bunch of professionals end up serving with us, contractors and electricians, oh. carpenters. So, you know, it's a really exciting and expiring, inspiring, not expiring, um, opportunity That's great. To, to serve your city. Yeah. Well, I w- Hannah wishes that you had for California so you could come down there, put some blinds in her, in her uh, house so she could have good sleep hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> you've heard about that this morning probably if you've been listening all right uh well yeah. hey shelly uh, we really thank you for uh leading the charge on this i know there's a lot of heavy lifting and by the way you told me off air that there are uh, chances for folks to um, probably every project won't be seen to its completion on that day so this is not just a one day thing although that's the headline uh there's opportunities throughout the year to help right there is yep Okay. Well, this is great. And of course, prayer is needed to, to make sure that everything comes off. The weather is nice. We're going to make sure I have to put out a plea for Tony Lupo because he can't control the weather, you know, and, uh, but Tony Lupo to make sure we have good weather. We're going to pray for good weather, safety and help and, uh, peace and love for everyone on that day. Okay. And that's again for Columbia, uh, on April 27th, right? All right. Shelly, thank you very much. Hope everyone will get out and register today. I do, too. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. That's a really neat project. When you think 57 churches and thousands of people, and maybe that starts to change the mentality of the polarization and the division and the hate and the angst that everyone has. Well, and I know there's a similar event that's been going on for a number of years in Jefferson City called Serve Jeff City. So ah. if you're and if you're in California or somewhere else and maybe your community doesn't have one, talk to the organizers and maybe get it together. I love seeing, you know, lots of people coming together for for one purpose. Here. Learn how to do it. And uh, they've been doing it now for 10 years, so it's a big anniversary for them. forcolumbia.com, that's how you learn about that.
Is there any update on the fire? Do we have anything new on that? If you're if you're traveling business there, loop, there's a video I think posted on the Eagles Facebook page, Hannah. We're following this this morning. A fire broke out early this morning on a roadway on business, both directions blocked. Yeah, there is a video posted to the 93.9 The Eagle uh, Facebook page of what the fire looked like early this morning. Uh, it was it was it was raging. It was a raging fire. So go check that out on the Eagles Facebook page. OK, um, so, yeah, it's a it's a big deal going on down there. We don't have any more details in terms of actually what building is going on. So we will uh, see. OK, Tasha texts us at 573-874-9390. I just went past the detour. It is still closed, and so that's going there. You know, we haven't talked too much about this um, this fellow that was found in the median of the roadway of I-70, yeah. and apparently after a crash, and I don't think any foul play was suspected. I guess somehow the body was missed. I don't know. And he was young. Too. Young guy. Yeah, that's a shame. So one of our uh, listeners said that they apparently, according, they, they he had been a, a teacher of this uh, deceased individual, so that's a shame. Oh, Jack Beard says, uh, I'll bring the kudzu, talking about the Pradford pears and the honeysuckle. No, if you read more, Jack <laughs> said that he was going to be planting Bradford pear trees and honeysuckle <laughs> Yeah. This oh, weekend. I'm planting pears and honeysuckle in my yard this weekend. Yeah. Rude. And I told you... him he was the loser of the week. Oh, Hannah, he'll never <laughs> listen again. You call him a loser. Nah, th- he said, I'll bring the kudzu. <laughs> yeah. Jack Jack and the show go way back. Yeah. He, is, he's cool. Is there any yeah. use for he's kudzu? He's the same guy behind the zebra mussels in all the, uh, <laughs> all the streams in Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> is there any use for kudzu? Any good use for kudzu i mean honeysuckle at least you know when we were kids we used to take the little the little flowers and then you could take the stamen out of there you could shoot the, that or you could suck on it, it tastes really good real sweet you ever did that no? i did yeah, yeah we would do that stuff. at track practice that's why the they spring. call it honeysuckle yep. of course but
yesterday, the S&P closed down just about a third of a percent. NASDAQ down 0.2 percent. Dow closed down 0.68 percent. And today, so far, we are uh, the <laughs> celebrating Red Friday, of course. <laughs> um, no, the indices are just slightly down this morning, mm. um, but holding pretty steady. Uh, yesterday, we got some big news that the DOJ and 15 other states are after our favorite tech entity, Apple. And I find this to be, and I don't, anti. we've got some really great uh, antitrust law professors here at Mizzou. Um, it is not my area, but I just do not understand <laughs> exactly what is going on. They've identified a bunch of different features of the iPhone, statements by uh, folks internal to Apple saying, um, you know, here's the problem here um, showing that Apple, you know, wants you to use Apple products. And yeah. if they have an accessory, one of the one of the one of the issues in the lawsuit is, well, the Apple Watch is only functional with an iPhone. Well, yeah, like I made it. So I want it to work with my phone. I don't like I just don't get this. They also, Hannah, I find this really hilarious. They've actually brought up the issue of is it the green bubble? What's the bad Android bubble on the text <laughs> messaging? What, like just the color of the text bubbles? Yeah. Yeah. So if an iPhone is texting an Android or I guess any other phone, uh, the text bubbles are green. But like if when I text Stephanie, since we both have iPhones, it's blue. And so they said this is essentially like uh, making people feel bad by coloring their messages a different color because... Oh, Lord. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, though. When you text... When we're texting back and forth, isn't it, I'm getting... It's because John has an Android. And so John messes it up for everybody. Oh, John, <laughs> it's all your fault. And they oh. have other things that are like exclusive to Apple. So with text messaging, you can only name your group chat if everyone is an yeah. Apple user. Um, apparently, when you're texting like Android uh, videos, it downgrades the video quality quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I guess... Um, Apple CEOs were asked about that and they said, you know, my mom's videos are coming through and they're bad quality. And he said, well, easy fix. Get your mom an iPhone. Yeah. And so um, the government doesn't like this. And they said you should have to play nice with your rivals and not make them not make people who don't have Apple products oh, feel man. bad. <laughs> that's, so that's socialism. I'm sorry. I don't like that. You know, I do think like. I do think in some ways like the Apple they've been there's been allegations before about like the Apple store and they like downgrade certain people's you know so if you open up a marketplace then let you know like the Apple store and other people put their apps in there then let that kind of be free flowing but as far as like what I'm supposed to make a product like an Apple watch that works with your stuff too that doesn't seem right. Yeah. Um, so there's, you know, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of antitrust action, not super successful, um, from the federal government as of late, but a lot of it has to do with cloud storage, some of the gaming platforms. Um, there's lots of different, uh, allegations in here. There's something called a super app that would allow you to like have more functionality and Apple's blocking that. They don't like that. Um, and these like mobile cloud streaming services, um, that would kind of open up the iPhone platform to mm, different rivals yeah but it also may open it up to what is most people feel is a is a pretty secure platform although i've been told by some techies that really the apple platform isn't all that unhackable but it doesn't seem to be as hackable to me i don't know that I'm, you don't hear as many disasters well well because the business community doesn't use apple right that's why right that's why you don't get that i wish the why doesn't the business community use apple why is everything pc
How about your winners and losers of the week, Stephanie Bell? You're starting with me? Okay. Okay. No, I do. I have a loser, and I'm trying to find out more information. Maybe our friend Brian knows more about this. But I saw the mayor of Kansas City touting this new fountain card that Kansas City is putting out. And he was saying, like, ooh, we've had it now for two months, and it's great. And it's like, it looks like an ID card, and I guess fountain card, because Kansas City has a lot of fountains. Oh, okay. And they say it's a municipal ID card allowing every, quote, unquote, everyone present in Kansas City to access banking, libraries, vital and efficient city services. And I got on the website and from what I can tell, there's no um, there's no requirement that you be a citizen to get a fountain card. I can't find one. Ooh. And that, you know, you can bring in your driver's license, but if you don't have a driver's license, and, and it's very clear that it's offered to every resident. It doesn't say legal resident. Mm. It doesn't say citizen of Kansas City. It says offered to every resident. And all you really need is like a pay, like a pay stub or like a, 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 a piece of mail that shows that you have an address in Kansas City and you get this fountain card that maybe allows you to access city services. It seems like a play to illegal immigrants and I why why do you need mm. this special card if you just have a government issued ID this system? sounds like a so this sounds like a subliminal uh, sanctuary city kind of a thing it sure does well wow. and, and good find Stephanie great catch and they have pushed good for find. sanctuary city over there have involving they? illegal immigrants um, so yeah I'm not aware of the card this is for, again we, we've yeah. had such a biz, busy week but why would they need this card and I pulled uh, up channel 5 story on it out of Kansas City and it says the cards will help people open savings and checking accounts rent apartments and access a number of services provided by Kansas City couldn't you just do that with your driver's license if you were uh, you know an, a citizen no. <laughs> and a I've got news for for uh, the reporter at channel 5 if someone tries to show up to Commerce Bank and say, I want to come down here and open up a savings account or a checking account, you are going to need a more than a, a fountain card from Kansas City to open that. I, I, I know that. And my mom worked at a bank, and uh, I, I guess maybe this thing could help them with accessing other services, but uh, and it's very, very interesting how that is written about resident. Yeah. Good well, catch. Very, very good catch, Counselor. My other um, winner, I'm going to say they're winners and losers. The state fair announced yesterday, so okay. they're a loser. You're a loser if you're going to the state fair this year what? because the state fair announced yesterday they are canceling all the rodeos, derbies, tractor pulls for 2024. They are going to be doing some um, arena construction, oh. and so that arena is not yeah. going to be available for Ooh. this year. No motocross, no tractor pulls? Nothing. Okay. Now they say it it's necessary because they're constructing a new state-of-the-art complex that's going to be finished in 2026 so it's coming back and it's going to be bigger and better than ever so i guess winners for future state fairs but i isn't there something temporary that they could do like outdoor or, i don't know it just that's it, it was sad to see that they're going to have to cancel stuff or you know put it somewhere else besides sedalia for a year so, you know i don't know it's, it's a wide berth of events that are going to be missed it's yeah. huge wow. and not till 2026 so next year will be canceled too? They said there's no word yet on whether this oh. will affect next year's hmm. state fair, but for sure it will affect this year's state and, fair. And rodeo at the state fair is popular, and uh, it, it very much it is popular. I'm sad to hear that. They have been the legislature under uh, Senator Leibla before, and, and current uh, current members now, Lincoln Huff's been involved in this, and the governor. They have been trying to do capital improvements out there in those fairgrounds, those buildings. It needs the work, but boy, that's a tough. That's tough. Yeah, that's a big deal. Oh, that's a shame. What would old Jim Mathewson have said about that, Brian? My gut feeling is Senator Mathewson would have said, "You're going to find a way to have this rodeo somewhere," <laughs> and he'd be he'd be puffing on a cigarette, even though there was no no smoking in the Capitol. He'd be puffing on a cigarette, saying, "Yeah, I just I miss that man." Wow. John Jim Mathewson was a heck of a guy. Yes, he was. Great senator Great back guy in the and day, a, and a radio radio guy at that. John, he what was. do you have on your winners and losers list? You know, I've got some positives. How about State Senator Kayla Browden, yeah. who's term limited, announcing he is not going to run for Secretary of State. And, Said he wouldn't seek any office this year. If you read between the lines, maybe he's not ruling out anything down the road. How, yeah, about, he, uh, how about some props to uh, Mayor Barbara Buffalo of Columbia for being a good sport, coming on with us and joking about the roll cards a little <laughs> bit on all that. And our buddy from uh, Real Realtor uh, Beth McGeorge, who came in with us the other day to kind of sort through the uh, big judgment against the National Association of Realtors. Yeah regarding commissions and 
now brings her real estate show to KWS on yeah. Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. That's That's, that, that thing is throwing the whole housing market into a little bit of some turmoil. I think uh, buyers, sellers, and of course, realtors are all, how's this all going to fall out? Yeah. I felt better, though, after hearing from yeah. Beth. Beth yeah, did a great I, job. I thought it was good. I thought Beth's comment kind of stuck with me. She said, you know, if, if I'm showing a home to somebody that has a lower commission attached to it, I'm still going to pitch it to them and sell them. You know, mm-hmm. that's what the market bears. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, that was good a great you. interview. That's great good. job getting her on, John. My, uh, one of my winners of the week is uh, Tony Bobolinsky. Mm. I thought his congressional testimony where he pushed back against uh, several of the uh, of the assembled representatives there i think including... you have pronounced his last name differently every single Bobolinsky. time <laughs> Bobolinsky. i like that Bobolinsky. uh tony's tony's a strong man and i'm glad to see uh sort of it was sort of one of those populist we the people are gonna sort of spit in your face you elitist you know representatives who try to condescend to us not all do not all do sure. but those who do deserve to be called you out know who you are a little bit of truth to power is very important and, and then i'm sorry it i just how often does a grown man cry it doesn't happen often unless you're glenn beck uh, uh, or, and, or, or me it's are you time. and and this is what <laughs> happened last night i did that last evening when my wife and i watched this post from our daughter with the little three-year-old on our wake up mid-missouri facebook page Flats mm. into the flag, United States of America, into oh. the blue purple for which it stands. One nation under God and a pistol, blizzard the wishes for all. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. That just brought me to tears. And uh, so little Remy, little Remy is uh, is a winner of the week for losers. The National Park Service for refusing to pay take cash for entrance fees. Wow. What's wrong with them? Wow. And General Mark Milley, who didn't have the courage to stand up for the right, what he advised back in uh, you know the Afghanistan mm-hmm. withdrawal, and then he doubled down on his incompetence mm-hmm. and his cowardice by trying to blame it on the State Department and the Biden administration. Sorry, Mark Milley, you got it all wrong on both ends of that deal. That's my winners and losers. Brian? I've got three uh, winners this week. Uh, first, we are going to, I'm going to nominate Addison and Lauren. They attend MACC and they work at the Sky Zone here in town. And they were, we had an event, a station event out this week. I'm too old to be jumping on a trampoline. So I was just there to lend moral support, but they did a great job and really put a great event on. We appreciate them, that's Addison neat. and yep. Lauren. That's I appreciate a fun place. Them. Great place. Yep. Really nice. Um, two basketball winners. Uh, Samford should have won last night. I believe they did. KU, sh- that guy did not follow him. That was all ball. I believe Samford would have won that game. They were 13, so uh, they're a winner of the week, Samford and Coach McMillan. And then Dana Altman, who's the coach of Oregon, Many of our listeners might remember he was the coach at Moberly Area Community College, now coaches the Oregon Ducks, and they're going to Ooh. Final 32. So good luck to him. And last but not least, CPD. Folks, and our first responders and firefighters, I have not seen a crazier week mm. in John may concur on this, may disagree. In 30-plus years, I've not seen a crazier week with this many shootings, homicides, fires, Today, the fi- the police are out there right now with the firefighters. The road is shut down on the business loop. We had a yep. bicyclist killed this week out on uh, 63 and B. We had another motorist get killed at I-70 near Lake of the Woods. They have this many incidents, and yet they do it. And they this week, they helped a woman that needed a wheelchair, couldn't get, get, get mm-hmm. over a curb. They did it and still get attacked for it, still get yeah. attacked for it on their own Facebook page. When you see a, C- a CPD officer, I'm going to say it louder for you in the back of the room, those of you listening. When you see one, let them know they are appreciated. They Absolutely. are worn out right now. Matt Nichols is worn out. His members would like to hear you say yeah. the words thank you. Yeah, this is this is one of those weeks where the protect and the serve were both in high profile. Well, no it had me it. thinking the yesterday. It reminded me of a certain week a few years ago in Ferguson, Missouri is what it kind of reminded me of. Yeah, and that was that was uh, and that went on for you know for weeks and weeks and civil unrest there too. That was and they were actually being attacked over there. In this case, nothing like that. But John, you're right. That was exhausting too. This is just one after the other. I have a winner and a loser of the week for those following along in the March Madness NCAA tournament. Uh, 
whose bracket is busted after <laughs> last night's game? You know, there, it never fails. There's at least one big upset, it seems, in the first round of the NCAA tournament every year. Uh, last night, 14 seed Oakland. They're the Golden Grizzlies that yep. come to you from Auburn Hills, Michigan, if you've never heard of them. Mm-mm. They took down third seeded Kentucky Wildcats. Mm, wow. Right? Holy it happens every year. It oh, never huge. fails. Um, but Kentucky is one of I guess Kentucky's the loser of the week. Oh. And yeah. Oakland is the winner of the week. Uh I hate to be like this, but it's kind of nice to see those big schools fall every once in a while, even if my bracket <laughs> suffers because of it. You know, I'll take it. Uh, another winner of the week. We talked earlier in the show about how the first successful pig kidney transplant into That's a human so cool. took place this week. And I was thinking about the experience I had in high school when we got to tour the biomedical lab at mm-hmm. Mizzou. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the fellas who was working there at the time is from Centralia, Dr. Eric Walters. And mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he still works there, um, but he's done research on this for years and is essentially one of the brains that can be credited for making this happen. One of many brains, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, so shout out to Dr. Walters. There's a lot of unsung heroes that um, start in obscure labs yep. in various places, and a lot of that's done here at University of Missouri. It's done uh, It's done at Wash U, at St. Louis, St. Louis U, in Kansas City, in research labs. And then and then it, it, it transforms into the high-profile stuff and the clinical application, and you hear about that. But, man, these are unsung heroes because there's, lo- there's a lot more failures along the way than successes. And then, finally, it's that, it's that applied science that they work so diligently to develop that then turns into the life-changing events that well, you read about. I toured the lab. It would have been six or seven years ago, mm-hmm. and they were you know several years into the research at that point. So. Yeah. Um, my other winner of the week, even though he's a Kansas man, uh, Chad Williams of Olathe, Kansas. Yeah. Uh, he's the one who caught that world record paddlefish yeah. or spoonbill, Big as spoonbill. I call them. Wow. Uh, he caught that at the Lake of the Ozarks this last mm. week. So congratulations to Chad for his 164 pound and 13 ounce paddlefish. Wow. That's, uh, that's huge. And imagine Amazing. Trying, to, trying to bring that in into Hannah's Point, Jack Golke of uh, Oakland had nine three-pointers in that game against, no, nine. And that was in 23 minutes. I mean, he was just incredible. So if you Google Jack Golke, he was absolutely incredible. Randy, I want to say one other thing real quickly. Tomorrow on this radio station, 93.9 The Eagle, our colleague Fred Perry is going to criticize the media's coverage of the crime. He doesn't feel like it's been covered enough this week. And Fred's a friend. I respect him. But... I disagree with him. I cannot tell you how much I disagree with him. The reality is we have covered the crime, not just on this station, but the news media outlets. We could dumb it. We could literally cover it in every newscast and not cover anything else. So great show. He's got some great stuff about a drug bust. Nobody else has. I do disagree with my friend Fred, though, uh, right. about the media well, not covering the crime enough. We have covered it. Well, and I'm I'm sure Fred was not talking about you and John but no. he was being he was no. being very vague and I just I, I didn't care for it okay well yeah. there you go that's yeah. the transparency that belie <laughs> that uh, you know undergirds the, the first amendment tune when in we, to CEO roundtable this weekend <laughs> when we come back right. we'll be talking about Jesus. some leftovers
the leftovers time. Stephanie, you have a leftover. Yesterday, the Attorney General, Andrew Bailey, announced that he is opening an investigation into Hazelwood School District after that young girl's beating outside of the school district. Um, the uh, he Essentially, he is uh, questioning whether the school district's DEI promotion um, basically was a priority over focusing on student safety. Well, and Fox picked up this story, and that's mm-hmm. the second time in, what, two weeks? Right. That Andrew Bailey has made headlines with Fox. So you know, There was a troubling story that the New York Post is reporting on, and uh, the family of that girl who was charged in the brutal beating claims that she's the real victim. Awful. That, that she was being bullied. Now, they claim that she, violin player, speaks four languages, had no prior problems at all. She'd been harassed and this bullied. This is the girl who repeatedly slammed the other girl's head into the concrete. Yes, right. Oh, nice. Not, not. Not Kaylee. Awful. Um, I, I, you know, I. it's hard to imagine how a person... I, the teen suspect's family on Saturday launched a petition begging Chief Juvie Officer uh, of the 21st Circuit Court not to charge her as an adult. Uh, other places I've read she's already been charged as a minor. So I don't, can that be changed once you've made an initial charge? I don't know. I don't know. Highlights the many, the petition highlights the the girl's many academic and athletic accomplishments, including the fact she speaks four languages, plays the violin in school orchestra, volleyball in the school's team, has recently been selected for college level AP classes. Uh, You know, I mean, I'm sorry, how do you justify what happened? That horrific video and the girl's left seizing. She's got a brain brain bleed. She is still comatose, last report on life support. I mean, I. And, and. Attorney General Bailey uncovered that the Hazelwood School District removed their school resource officers in 2021 after some issues with DEI training. There were no school resource officers at the time when wow. the attack happened. I mean, <laughs> and this is this is prime fodder for school resource officers, right? Yeah. When that kind of stuff is happening or allegedly happening, that's what they're about. So I don't know. I just uh, very very troubling stuff. Very very troubling. Now. Uh, and in the great story, Hannah, thank you for who posted this. 30,000. 30, I put it on there just for you. 30,000 bees safely removed from a Lebanon building. What about the safety of the people removing the bees? Well, no, but there's experts that do yeah. that. The rescue effort was successfully carried out thanks to 417 bees and Sun and Bloom Farms, the downtown the Lebanon. rescue effort? Yeah, yeah they, well, they, they can relocate those hives without yeah. killing the bees. Yeah, they have to identify the. Qu- 